In this podcast, we're going to put together a couple concepts that we've learned um, into one big idea. So we're going to talk about how to predict products um, based on figuring out what the type of reaction is. Just as review, let's go over the five types of reactions. If you have a single element plus a single element and one product, we call that a combination or a synthesis reaction. A single product that breaks apart into two, or excuse me, a single reactant that breaks apart into two products is a decomposition. A single element plus a compound where your metals swap places is a single replacement. For a single replacement, you're always going to have one guy by his lonesome, not in a compound. In a double replacement, you have two compounds, and those two compounds, your metals are going to swap places. So here, A and C are representing my metals. So this is an example of a double replacement because um, both of your metals have swapped places and they are now with new nonmetals. A combustion reaction doesn't really follow a great um, a set of rules like the previous four reactions, but combustion reactions always have a certain number of carbons and hydrogens burning in the presence of oxygen, and you will always get the same products. That's carbon dioxide and H2O. So if you can't quite figure out what type of reaction it is, and there's only carbons, only hydrogens, only oxygens, it is a combustion reaction. All right, the steps we're going to use to um, address every problem is to first convert the words of the equation to the reactant symbols and formulas. So we're gonna go from words to equations. We are going to check charges and make sure that our charges create neutral compounds to become the subscript. We are gonna figure out what type of reaction we have because you will only be given the reactants. And if we can figure out the type of reaction, we can then predict the products. And again, in predicting those products, we're gonna look at the charges, which will determine our subscript for those products. And the final step is to balance the equation. Okay, so let's start by underlining our compounds. So here we have lead iodide breaks down. So lead has a symbol of Pb, and lead can have either a plus 2 or a plus 4 charge, and our Roman numeral tells us it is a plus 2 charge. Iodide has a symbol I with a minus 1 charge. I'm going to drop and swap my subscript. So my neutral compound will have two iodines for every um, lead molecule, and scoop these guys closer together. And whenever you see breaks down, um, that's essentially telling us that this is a decomposition reaction. It may also even say lead iodide decomposes. So we know that we have everything we need to predict the type of uh, reaction. So because this is a decomposition reaction, that's where you have a single reactant that breaks apart into two products. I'm going to follow kind of that logic where AB is my lead to iodide. So they're going to break apart into lead and iodine. Okay, lead is a metal. It can stand by itself. It doesn't need subscript and I certainly wouldn't put the charge on there because I'm not trying to bond it with anything. And iodine is a nonmetal. And it is one of our Brinkelhoff, one of our diatomic elements. So anytime it's by itself, like it is right here, you need to put a 2 in the subscript. So the last step is to balance the equation. I'm going to draw a line between my um, reactants and my products, and I'm going to start looking at each individual element. I have one lead here and one lead here. Those are balanced, no coefficient necessary. Two iodines on the reactant side and two iodines on the um, product side. So I don't actually need any coefficients. This is balanced just the way it is. And we never put the number one in front because we assume you have at least one of each of those that are present. Um, so we can leave that blank. In our next problem, we have zinc being added, which is a plus, to hydrochloric acid. We are given the formula for that. So let's go ahead and write out our reactants, predict the type of product, and then figure out what the products are. So zinc is a metal, and it can stand alone, so we don't put any subscript, we don't worry about charges, is added is a plus sign to hydrochloric acid, and we are given the formula for that, which is HCl. So now our task is to identify what type of reaction is this. I have a single element plus a compound. That is a single replacement reaction. 
And in a single replacement reaction, my cations or positively charged um, ions are going to swap places. Most of the time these are metals, but we're seeing in this one, hydrogen has a positive charge and it's not a metal. So you have to be able to recognize that. So hydrogen and zinc are gonna swap places. So now hydrogen is by itself and zinc is bonded to chlorine. So I'm gonna write um, the charges so I can figure out if the subscript what the subscript needs to be. Zinc is one of the few transition metals that always has the same charge as a plus two charge and chlorine has a minus one charge. This tells me when I drop and swap that I need two chlorines for every one zinc molecule. And I'm gonna scoot these guys closer together. Going back to hydrogen, um, hydrogen is not a metal. It's acting like a metal right now, but it's not a metal. It's a diatomic element, which means anytime it's by itself, like it is right here, I need to put a two in the subscript. So now I'm ready to balance. I'm gonna count up zinc. I have one zinc here, one zinc here. Perfect, we're balanced, we're good. Here I have one hydrogen, and on the product side I have two hydrogens. So I'm gonna go back to the smaller side, and I'm gonna think what times one will give me two, and the answer is two. So now I have two hydrogens. This two, remember, applies to not only hydrogen, but also to chlorine. So I actually have two chlorines here as well. Going back to my product side, I notice my subscript is two and my coefficient's one, so one times two is two. I have two chlorines here as well. So all I needed to balance this equation was to put uh, a two in front of the HCl, and now we're balanced. All right, in this problem, we are told that cyclohexene, and we're given the formula for that, burns in air. So cyclohexene is our um, compound, and burning in air means plus O2. So let's start writing this out. C6H10 plus O2, and I need to think about what type of equation, what type of reaction this is. Um, I notice that I only have carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens present. I don't care what the amounts of those carbons and hydrogens are, but that tells me that this is a combustion equation. And in a combustion equation, there's no swapping, there's no moving around. You always wind up with the same two products, and that is CO2 and H2O. So I'm going to write those up here as my products, CO2 plus H2O. And now I balance. So I'm going to draw a line um, between my reactants and my products. I'm going to start with carbon. I have six carbons on my reactant side and only one carbon on my product side. That two right there only applies to the element that it comes after. So that's that's telling me I have one carbon and two oxygens. It does not apply to carbon. Um, so six times one will give me uh, six carbons on this side. Moving on to hydrogen, I have 10 hydrogens here. And over here I only have two. Two times five gives me 10. So now those are balanced. Oxygen, remember in a combustion problem, I like to work those backwards and I like to start with the side um, that has them split apart, which is always my reactant side. Um, okay, so here I have six times two is 12. Oxygen separated by a plus sign, five times one is five. So I have 17 oxygens on the side and that is going to be a problem because no matter what I put in the coefficient here, I'm going to get an even number because I have to multiply it by 2, and 17 is not an even number. I can't use decimals or fractions. I have to use whole numbers. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take this number. This is the number that's giving me an odd number, and I'm going to double that number. So instead of 5, I'm going to change this to 10. Okay, so I went up by 1, power of 1. Okay, this is going to change my hydrogens, and I'm going to deal with the hydrogens first, and then I'm going to go back and deal with the oxygen. So now I have 20 hydrogens on the product side, and only 10 on the reactant side. So I'm going to have to think of a number times 10 that will give me 20, so I'm going to put 2 in the coefficient. Well, guess what? That's going to change my carbons. So now I have 12 carbons on this side. Okay, not a big deal. I can go back and always change this coefficient. So 1 times 12 gives me 12. Don't be scared of big numbers. Um, now let's work those oxygens from the product side to the reactant side. 
12 times 2 is 24 oxygens plus 10 times 1 is 10. This gives me 34. Okay, 34 is divisible by 2. Okay, if I divide 34 by 2, I get 17. Perfect, because that is my coefficient. 17 times 2 gives me 34 oxygens, and now we're balanced. Another approach you can use if you're not quite comfortable um, with doubling this number is you can always go back and put a 2 in front of your hydrocarbon or your carbon and hydrogen compound. Um, that will change your number of hydrogens, usually um, making it, well, will make it even. Um, and then you can always come back to your product side and make that oxygen even as well.